It was the year 1977. The country had just been woken up by a root shock called the emergency. And there was widespread anger against the Congress. And it was under these circumstances that Jyoti Basu took over the reins of West Bengal, forming the first non-Congress government of the state. And the entire Bengali society came out in support of Jyoti Babu. The people in West Bengal actually wanted a change. That time Jyoti Basu uh, was the, like, you know, uh, people actually looked at him as a mass leader. That was the change he brought in. And he came with lots of, uh, giving lots of hopes to the people there. The 70s were a turbulent period. The rising inflation and corruption in high places had left the country reeling. And the inequalities in Bengal were starker than ever before. Jyoti Basu came to power on the promise of reform. Within almost 10 months of his being getting elected, he was elected in June, the Panchayat elections were held in May, so 11 months. Within 11 months of, be, of uh, being elected in 1977, Jyoti Babu delivered on both his promises. What he effectively created as a result of his Panchayat model was he established a third tier of government. If the Panchayati Raj was a step towards the future, the land reforms were an effort to break away from the past. Operation Barga, as it was christened, was the biggest land distribution in the history of the country. Launched in 1977, Operation Barga aimed at giving the sharecroppers the rights over the land that they tilled. Until date, more than 15 lakh sharecroppers have benefited from it. And it was this gesture that made Jyoti Basu a darling of the masses. Land reforms is the first part, but the much, much, much more radical reform that he actually did was giving tenancy rights to sharecroppers and making them virtual owners. So in other words, he created an ownership society at the rural level. It was a phenomenal task because A, identifying and recording sharecroppers, you had something like 20 lakh sharecroppers. Mm. So just doing that as a process and then giving them tenancy rights was a phenomenal, it was administratively huge, it was politically very, very difficult and he managed both. The success of the land redistribution and the agrarian reforms that followed can be judged from the figures alone. In 1977, when Jyoti Basu became the CM, the rice production of the state was around 6 to 7 million tons. By 80s, it jumped to 10 million tons and in 2007-8, the production more than doubled to 14 million tons. Not only this, during the 90s, the rice story extended to vegetables too. West Bengal's production increased five times from 4.68 million tons to 22.46 million tons. And the success of agriculture was perhaps the brightest feather in Jyoti Basu's cap. This is the first experiment of its kind. The agriculture was doing so well that there was a surplus in, in South Bengal, compensating for the less of produce in the western rim of West Bengal. Compensating in some way, as I said, for industry, compensating for some way for the decline of the tea industry in North Bengal. So, the, the, the uh, agricultural <coughs> marvel uh, that you know about West Bengal today. Uh, many land has now been transformed into double cropping, into triple cropping. These kind of experiments, along with land reform, is I think the third understanding of, uh, of uh, the unfolding of the left saga in 34 years. That has to be taken very carefully. But he could not replicate the same success with manufacturing and other industries. And the three decades of left rule saw a collapse of manufacturing in the state. Marred by strikes, West Bengal saw industrial units shutting shop one after another, leaving thousands with no option of employment. In fact, a look at the per capita income figures tell a revealing story. In 1980-81, the per capita income of West Bengal was 1,773 rupees which was 0.6% less than the national average of 1,784. 
In 2009-10, the state per capita income was 41,469 rupees against a national average of 46,492 rupees or 11% less. But it is not as if the state was opposed to industrialization and private capital. Basu, being a pragmatic communist, was always on the lookout for private investments. And West Bengal was one of the first states to adopt Manmohan Singh's liberalized economic policy. The new industrial policy of the, of the Narasimha Rao government was adopted in 1991. West Bengal was among the first states to actually have a modification and a sort of localized local flavor, add a local flavor to the same industrial policy resolution and adopt it. And he did this in 1994. So very quickly he changed tack. So in another 10 years he moved towards industry, towards economic reforms and therefore said, I'm open to all sorts of investments. So where did the story go wrong? I think when you look at Bengal, you'll have to take a look at the big picture. Because what has really happened is there are the basic systems have been infiltrated by the communists. We're talking, if you're talking about education, if you're talking about health, if you're talking about infrastructure, you know, the, if you're talking about the police force, for example, even the, I mean, the police, for example, a guy, a, a, a common citizen should go to the police saying that this is, the policeman can help me. Otherwise it became party keda. The police was an extension of the party. O'Brien is a former quiz master and a popular face on the small screen. But as he confesses, and as he claims, it was the high-handedness of the left carders which has disillusioned the people of West Bengal. A view that finds echoes from all sections. The carders developed vested interest in the party positions that they held, that uh, they became, they turned them into uh, lucrative ventures. Uh, and uh, often, often engaging in extortion and uh, uh, in fact protection of people and seeking money thereby. Uh, I think that uh, uh, these uh, charges, some of them may be true and some of them may be exaggerated. But the fact remains that there is, uh, there is little hope uh, and little inspiration that uh, the left front government evokes today after 35 years of rule, uninterrupted rule in that state. In West Bengal, if you talk to people, you know that you know, anything and everything, there is an intervention from the communist leader. You know, without a CPM local leader's uh, um, permission or kind of green signal, you cannot get a birth certificate, you cannot get a marriage certificate, you cannot get a driving license. You need their uh, backing. In This kind of led to a party community. In the sociologists in West Bengal say it's not a CPM rule, it's, it's a party community in the state. And it was out of this angst that Mamta Banerjee cashed in. Banerjee, who started her political career with the Congress in the 70s, has had a love-hate relationship with the party. In 1997, she split from the Congress to form her own party, Trinamool Congress. And although she has managed to have two stints at the centre, Trinamool has largely been relegated to a marginal player in Bengal. Till Shingur happened. She rallied for the masses and managed to drive away the Nano from Bengal. And in a sense, this gave her a second lease of life in West Bengal politics. This is perhaps the first time that Banerjee is threatening to break through the left bastion. Left's Bengal chapter might find a closure in this election. But will Kerala, the other major left passion, follow suit? We'll find out after this short break.